All right, so this is my lesson eight assignment, alternative assignment on power. And um, so number one asks, what is power? And I thought it was really interesting to look at it um, from an interpersonal level because I'd really only ever thought of power, at least as it relates to the use of the word in broad terms and, and in hierarchies and things like that. Like for example, um, where government has power over its people or where one nation might have power over another um, but again, looking at it from kind of an interpersonal level was pretty enlightening for me. Um, and so on page 140 in the textbook, it kind of opened my eyes a little bit on talking about how we often view power as a possession, but in fact that it's not something that's really owned. And, and if I look back at kind of how I've considered, um, power and like people that possess power, I have kind of looked at it as something that you would own or possess or maybe have forever or not have forever. Um, but it was really enlightening where it was talking about, it's really about controlling resources or having certain desirable skills. Um, and the only, you know, the, the people only have power in instances where other people give value to those resources and skills as well. Um, so overall for me, kind of as a result of reading the lesson and thinking a little bit about it, I view power as the ability or perceived ability to have an effect on the outcome of something or a situation. Mm -hmm. And looking back at the textbooks dis discussion of um, possessing skills and resources and means to power, I think power also is having a great number of resources or skills that are valued widely and culturally. So likewise, being able to affect other people's access to these valued resources um, can be a place where power is derived from too. So like um, people that have the ability to affect my access to money may have power over me, for example. And so um, one of the contexts that I was looking at power in was kind of my work relationships and firstly kind of my relationship to the company and then my relationship to my immediate um, boss and bosses. And so um, when I view kind of in my own life, like for example, my boss has power over me because she has a say in my access to the resource of money, which of course is socioeconomically a valuable resource. Um, and then on the other hand though, I have some power over her and the company in that I provide a resource in terms of workplace skills that she and the company desire for a profitable um, outfit. So recently, a more specific example of that is that recently we've had a lot of people leaving the company and going to fulfill similar roles at new companies here in town for more money. And from this, I've kind of retrospectively, like looking at how it's kind of developed, I've gained more power as a senior member on our team because now that they're understaffed, they now hope more so than ever to keep their best employees that much more. So my job skills and experience being the, res the resource that's like discussed in the definition are that much more valuable to them. Therefore, I have that much more power over them. And so as such, we've kind of mm -hmm. recently entered into negotiations about more benefits and pay rises um, for me and some other people on the team that kind of have come to um, view the situation in that light. And this wouldn't have happened unless the perceived amount of power I had increased as a result of the perceived value of like the resources that I provide to the company. And then just looking at what power is in conflict, um, I think it really operates in much the same way as it does in kind of my own understanding and the definition of power I gave. And I was really interested in what the textbook said on page 147 when you know, it's talking about when reason, discussion, and debate don't yield a solution, people begin to call on valuable resources to convey power over the potential outcome of a situation. And it's not always money, like it can be social skills and debating tactics or connections to people who historically might have more power or um, say in the outcome, or formal authority, like in a hierarchical structure where, uh, you know, like a boss employee relationship. So it kind of if you kind of just take the definition that I gave, I feel like, and applied it to any kind of a conflict, I feel like it pretty much um, operates in much the same way. And then in question three, it was asking, do you agree that power is less powerful when you live through the consequences? Why or why not? Yeah, this was a really interesting 
question, and I think the example that um, you gave, Dr. Lamb, in the uh, video was was it really helped me understand like what the question was because I didn't quite understand originally. But yeah, looking through it and, and thinking about it, I agree with it 100%. And I was thinking about I took like a an ethics class um, a long time, well not that long ago, a few years ago, and I wrote this paper on. Um, kind of like the construct of civilization and where power is derived and those kinds of dynamics. And I remember uh, citing the, Thomas Hobbes' The Leviathan, and he suggested that citizens of... Wilson. Sorry, my dog's whining. Um, and uh, what was that? Oh, yeah. And so he was kind of suggesting that citizens of a civilization agree to participate in it and therefore concede certain power and liberties um, to the rulers of that civilization. Um, and so as it relates to question three, after living through the consequences of that for X amount of time, if the results of that arrangement become unacceptable to me, the power of the rulers becomes less effective because I'm less likely to continue to cede those same rights as I was when I first entered into the arrangement. And I think also kind of, um, looking back at, the example, the workplace example that I gave in question one, it kind of flows similarly to that, where at the beginning of my employment, I accepted a certain salary and certain benefits. And in turn, I ceded certain power and certain rights to the company, right? Like I would show up for X amount of time a day, work the full time and accept the pay that um, was offered. And then after being there for several years and, you know, I wouldn't say suffering through, but kind of, um, experiencing what all that meant to me and then learning that the skills and resources that I have might be more valuable than they are being made out to be by the company, they begin to have less power over me. And this is only because I've lived through the so-called consequences of ceding power to them for the last several years. Um, and learning that, again, that my resources had become more valuable, whether it's because of increased experience or just the fact that there are new um, companies in the area that are offering better benefits.